All right, so as many of you guys may know, or for those of you who have been here on my channel for a while now, I am the type of person that I don't really care about differential. Like, I'm a believer in if I just win more games than a majority of everybody else, then I make playoffs regardless. So what's the point of being like plus 30 or plus 20 in the league when I won most of my games so i'm in playoffs regardless and obviously if i lose more than i win i'm not in playoffs now i know for some people differential is a very important thing and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because in ewt the roster is so little i think we only had like 12 or 14 coaches i want to say i actually i want to look uh this up real quick yeah we only had 12 coaches in the EWT which means differential is actually kind of important honestly and that is something I've never really had to consider in any draft league I've ever been in I've tried to not really care about like uh numerical differential is what I'm trying to say like like wins and losses are fine but then if you're tied with somebody then if your uh differential is lower by like one point then you're a place under them if it's higher a place above them and just that is something i just now realized that i need to take into consideration in ewt so hopefully we can do well the rest of the season the people that place number one and number two get a bye week for playoffs so hopefully we can try and snag that and uh, we can have to worry about one less game going into playoffs so yeah, boss of YouTube, how's it going guys? We have the team builder for week number 5 of EWT Season 1. We are taking on Vepsis and his Helsinki High Dragons. I have heard of Vepsis a little bit before in the past. He is definitely a solid player and, in my opinion, one of the better players in the EWT. After we took on Meralt last week and we were able to sneak away with a victory hopefully we can get another win this week here to put us in potentially top three for the ewt if we lose then we stay in the bottom top half of ewt but if we win this week then we are able to hopefully try and fight for a bye week in the first round of playoffs now i'm gonna be real with y'all here i honestly did not have a lot of time to build for this matchup a part of me honestly thinks that we're probably gonna lose this game because i kind of half asked some of the spreads a little bit but at the same time it's kind of like vepsis most likely will be making playoffs so realistically i can be more serious when we do possibly face him in playoffs and then this way we can get a little bit of a trial run of what he may want to try and bring against us in a potential playoff game so yeah a part of me really wasn't upset that i didn't spend as much time on this but no excuses that is just the truth regardless though we will be trying our best to win this match because i do want to try and hopefully get that bye week and uh, be one of the top teams in the EWT currently. So let's take a look at our matchup here. Now, instantly the number one giant. <laughs> oh my God, we have to address the Mamoswine in the room. Uh, yes, look at Mamoswine's dual stab and just kind of look at my team. I'll, I'll sit here on like, like you got five seconds. <laughs> Yeah, I have absolutely zero, and I mean zero answers to Mammo Swine in this battle. It's dual stab absolutely murders everything that I want to bring to this game, and that is terrifying, mainly because due to speed tiers, it can easily run an adamant nature as opposed to jolly, which just means is going to be doing more damage to my team, and then late game I shared is such a giant, giant nuisance to deal with. I fully expect them to bring like adamant life orb. Mamoswine can definitely do a lot of damage. Regardless, though, Mamoswine is easily the biggest, biggest problem in this match. 
Uh, Zera Aura is a very close second just because it's so blisteringly fast that it can run a plus attack nature or it can run jolly like super fat and that in itself would also be really really annoying. Big Teeny is another kind of nuisance in this game but I have a Tyranitar so part of me almost doesn't even expect Big Teeny to come to this game because if I am Sand Rush with Sand Slash I have something to check it. Tyranitar can potentially Pursuit Trap it so I'm not too concerned about the Big Teeny. Uh, Virizion is also kind of annoying as well just because its dual stab is a little bit difficult for me to potentially try and switch into but maybe something like Scarf Virizion could potentially come to this game to try and check my Volcarona or maybe try to outspeed Sand Slash in the sand or even potentially my Stoutland. And then Hydreigon, I don't really expect Hydreigon just because it's not one of his Z-Mons. His Z-Mons are Victini and the Gramble, if I'm not mistaken. And speaking of Gramble, his matchup is not entirely too bad. Like, he can definitely bring a physically defensive Gramble, potentially. Uh, the Bronzong and Gliscor are a very annoying wall core that can definitely come to this match as well. Skuntank plus Tentacruel is a little bit interesting. I honestly don't expect both of those to come at least one or the other if anything i would expect skunk tank to come over tentacruel because skunk tank can at least try to check my mega alakazam as where tentacruel i don't really know what it could do in this match like we have double ground types our grass types are also able to potentially uh, just wear it down and chip it down i guess it can kind of check my Volcarona potentially, but then we also have Mega Alakazam that can take advantage of it. In Sand, Scald's not doing much damage to my Tyranitar, and it doesn't get any form of reliable recovery, so it's going to get easily worn down. So, yeah, I don't expect both Skuntank and Tentacruel in this game, at least one or the other. And then Mega Pidge, I'm kind of up in the air on whether or not he honestly wants to bring Mega Pidge. It has literally nothing to touch my Tyranitar, but I guess he can U-turn out against it, which means... It would have to be like U-Turn, Roost, Hurricane, and I guess Heat Wave. Although my best answer to it is Cabalion, so maybe he would want to go mono attacking, maybe HP fighting. I don't really know what Mega Page would want to run in this match, but Mamoswine is giant threat numero uno and then zero aura is also another giant pain because it is a zemon which means it's gonna get an instant nuke if it sets up so we need to be very very careful around mainly those two mons and then the rest of his team we can kind of deal with accordingly so let's take a look here at our first team member now as i mentioned memo swine is such a problem so i decided to go with a physically defensive intimidate stoutland as my main answer to the mamoswine now the great thing about this set is that because again due to speed tiers there is no reason he should really be running jolly mamoswine which means i can take advantage of that and even though i think we speed tie or we outspeed him by one point if he's adamant well actually no I mean, to be honest, there's no real reason for him to be Adam at max speed anyways, so... Yeah, I think this is speed creeping any type of speed creep he may have on Mamoswine. So then that way, after the Intimidate, we're still able to outspeed him after taking one hit. And then Superpower does a huge chunk of damage to the Mamoswine. If Rocks are up and he is Life Orbed, then Superpower after, I believe, one Stealth Rock switch in and one Life Orb hit is a guaranteed KO even if he's running a little bit of bulk, which is amazing. And if I need to trade my Stoutland for his Mamoswine, that is definitely something I will gladly do. Just because as soon as Mamoswine is gone, that is one giant offensive threat that I no longer have to deal with. I don't need to worry about it having Life Orb Ice Shards in the back for my potential Sand Slash or Landorus or any other type of offensive mon like Mega Alakazam or Decidueye as well. So yeah, if I need to go 1v1 against the Mamoswine, I will gladly do that. But the speed is there for the Adam and Mamoswine, and that's literally all I needed to do. Unfortunately, I can't touch something like the Gligar or do too much to the Gramble, but those are the least of my concerns. Stoutland needs to do one job and one job only, and that is to deal with Mamoswine. So yeah, Protect is also kind of nice. In case Sand is enough, I'm able to Protect and then regain back some more HP so I can more reliably check 
the Mamma Swine throughout the battle as well. And then Crunch is there for the Bronzong and Superpower hits the Mamma Swine and then return basically hits everything else. So our next team member here is going to be Mega Alakazam. Now I was really up in the air on what exactly I wanted to run on my Mega Alakazam. I figured that maybe recover three attacks would ultimately be better because even if he does have Skuntank, the majority of my team can either weaken or get rid of Skuntank. So as soon as that gets really low, then my Mega Zam should be able to deal with it. Even if he has Sucker Punch, if I know he has Sucker Punch, I can maybe try to play around it with Recover. And then from there, I can knock him out potentially with a Dazzling Gleam. And besides that, Psychic and Shadow Ball pretty much smacks the entirety of Vepsis's team here. Like there's not really much besides the Skuntang that he honestly wants to try and switch into my Mega Alakazam. Plus, the nice thing about Mega Alakazam is that I can trace some of his abilities, which can also come in handy, like Intimidate off of the Gramble. I can maybe trace the Levitate to help against Mamoswine. I can trace uh, Zero Aura's Volt Absorb, so it doesn't hit me with its stab move, although I guess it could be like Knock Off and then Z Knock Off, and I guess that would be a little bit annoying, but you guys get what I mean. Like Being able to trace abilities is still really, really handy in this match regardless and our speed is enough to speed creep him speed creeping my Cabalion I want to say I think that Cabalion hits like 178 speed so he only really needs to hit 180 so I figured that because the extra bulk really wouldn't entirely matter too much I can maybe try and speed creep his potential speed creep and go up to 185 then that way I could try to catch him off guard possibly. So yeah with Modest we're able to just do so much damage to everything and then with Recover this thing can definitely stick around for a good majority of this battle. So I'm hoping that Mega Zam can do something this week. Unfortunately it didn't do anything in week number four because I didn't even get a chance to send it out but hopefully here in week six it can put in work because if he doesn't have Skuntank for some reason then this basically just comes in and potentially gets a free kill. So hoping the Skuntank doesn't come. If it does come then the rest of our team should be okay against it I think so our next team member here is going to be our potential win condition which is going to be Volcarona now the nice thing about Volcarona in this match is that unless he takes on a rock move on just about everything there's not much that can actually one shot Volcarona which is very good because if I get up two quiver dances with this mon here I basically most likely just win late game honestly like the bulk is so nice that i can quiver dance at least once with a roost it'll give me an option to potentially quiver dance a second time and then a plus two attack plus two speed i outspeed everything i'm smacking everything fiery dance is also very handy because if i get the special attack boost at plus two speed and plus three special attack that means he has even less answers for my vocal rona and then with beginium z at plus one or plus two is just able to absolutely murder something which is amazing and if i get up rocks and sand is up his answers to this are very very limited him bringing tentacruel for this does make a lot of sense but again i don't think he would bring skuntank and tentacruel it just seems kind of redundant honestly so if i don't see the tentacruel this has a much easier time to deal with his team if i do see the tentacruel i just need to try and focus on getting rid of it and then from there I can try to get this in on something to potentially set up and just kind of go from there and because of the messy terrain there is no way hopefully that he will be able to status me and uh, just try and sweep so yeah Volcarona definitely does have an amazing matchup in this game here but the main issue is just trying to find the opportunity to set up and guaranteeing that Stealth Rocks are not on my side of the field because I don't expect them to bring T-Spikes on Tentacruel because we have Macy Terrain and we could potentially bring the Roselia as well. So I'm not too concerned about those and I don't know why this popped up, but I'm not concerned about it. So yeah, hopefully Volcarona can put in a lot of work here 
along with our Mega Alakazam. But moving on to our next team member, obviously because we have Volcarona here, we need to have some type of hazard removal, and that is going to be our Tapu Fini, which is supposed to be shiny. Yes, shiny Tapu Fini here. And this also functions as a pseudo backup check to the Mamoswine. It's hitting the same speed that Stoutland is hitting to outspeed an adamant natured Mamoswine. Honestly, if Mamoswine is jolly, it's not as big of an issue just because the difference between Jolly to Adamant Mamoswine is actually kind of noticeable and with Jolly it's still doing good damage to my team but because it's not hitting me as hard I can then take more advantage of it so yeah again he's got no reason to run Jolly I can just run a enough speed to outspeed Adamant Mamoswine and not really be too concerned about a super speedy Mammoth Swine, honestly. So yeah, this is a backup check to that, and this is all. This is also able to deal with the Tentacruel, the Skuntank, the Bronzong, the Gligar, basically any of his defensive mods. Now, obviously, I don't hit the Tentacruel for super effective damage, but getting off 50% on Tentacruel is absolutely huge because, again, as soon as Tentacruel is gone, if he does bring it. That makes the matchup for Volcarona even more amazing and it gives it such a better opportunity to potentially sweep because we don't have Psychic on it. But Beginium Z from Volcarona is able to pretty much murder anything besides the Tentacruel at plus one, which is amazing. So yeah, Nature's Man is really huge to deal with the Tentacruel. Even if it has Black Sludge, if we have Sand Up, it's going to be neutralizing its Sand and then we have Rocks Up to chip it down even more. We have so much to revenge kill Tentacruel if he does bring it. So I'm not too concerned about it coming and the fact that I can't touch it is not that big of an issue to me because we're still able to deal with the Skuntank, the Bronzong, and the Gligar, which are the rest of his really kind of defensive mons and we already do so much damage to the Gramble as it is. We can definitely tank a Leaf Blade from the Verizion if it doesn't Sword Zance and Moonblast does so much damage to it. We can take a Bolt Strike from the Victini. Plasma Fist from Zeraora is a different question though depending on what he's running on it the nature evs and item we can maybe live a hit but i don't want to try and put myself in the scenario of where i have finny in on zero aura and i'm forced to take a hit from it basically like i most likely am going to need this to take at least one earthquake from the mammoth swine which is already doing about 40 ish percent so yeah i need to be very careful with this type of finny but it can definitely help to wear down his really fat defensive mons and most importantly defog away stealth rocks or t like i really don't think he brings t spikes but if he does then we can defog them away as well so yeah that's basically all i really want finny to do in this game is what i always wanted to do in every game pivot get rid of hazards chip things down, weaken his walls, and just go from there. So yeah, hopefully Finny can do Finny things. I love Tapu Finny, man. This thing is an absolute monster, and I definitely believe it will be a huge asset for us in this game. So moving on to our next team member, we have Tyranitar, aka Nate Tar, with its EVs all over the place. So the idea behind Tyranitar is that I don't really need to run max attack in this match and the bulk is actually going to be very very helpful because this can also kind of pivot in to some of his team i can switch into the hydreigon the zero aura the victini the mega page most importantly the skuntang even the bronzong and the tenor curl as well as maybe gligar if for some reason he doesn't have earthquake like the thing about gligar though is that if he does bring it then it's definitely going to be defog i don't know if he would put rocks on that or maybe he'll put rocks on mamoswine knowing that mamoswine does force out a lot of my team to switch so he can maybe go something uh, down that route potentially but this is able to deal with a good majority of his non super aggressive mons and because of chopple berry this can also act as a really good backup check to the zero aura because that thing is an absolute nightmare to deal with honestly if it gets boosting or if it just gets so many free switches in and out and if i'm not able to get up stealth rocks then that is going to be a giant problem, but with the Chapel Berry, I can hopefully lure it in. Earthquake does a really good amount of damage to that. And then Crunch and Ice Punch basically hit everything else for neutral or super effective damage, which is absolutely amazing. And I don't really expect Tyranitar 
to be around this game too long but if i'm able to at least get up rocks and maybe get rid of the zero aura then that would be more than i would want tyranitar to do because it can also potentially get rid of the victini now the main reason i don't expect victini is because with choppleberry there is no way in the world that victini should ever be able to deal with with my Tyranitar like I can eat any hit from it I could try and pursue trap it even uh, even though I don't have pursuit it could still be something that he thinks about in the back of his mind so then I can crunch him if he stays in and just I don't expect Victini basically if he does come then I just deal with it when I see it but if I can get rid of Zero Aura get on my rocks then this thing has already done more than I really needed to do. So, yeah, EV spreads all over the place. Like, I can take physical hits. I can take special hits a little bit better. The Adam and Nature with 36 attack EVs are just there so I can do more damage, basically. So, yeah, there's a lot that I may need Tyranitar to do, but if it does two specific things, then I will be more than happy with it in this game. And then our final team member is going to be Sandslash. Now this is kind of my best switch into the Zero Aura, honestly, because we are running a very bulky spread with the Assault Vest here. And I think we are running enough speed to outspeed a max speed Zero Aura, just in case he's the type of person to run one mon with like max speed on it so this is nice because not only can we deal with the zero aura but with all four of these moves we can actually smack everything besides the glygar and the bronzong around which i figured that he may not bring glygar honestly so i really wasn't too concerned about not touching that and then bronzong we have so many ways to deal with Bronzong, honestly. I'm not even concerned about it whatsoever. I would be more concerned about the Gligar if he does actually bring it, though. Because it just gets a free switch in always against this Sand Slash set. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit Rapid Spin on this set just because I need Stone Edge for the Mega Page. I want to have Egg Scissor for the Hydreigon, even though I doubt Hydreigon comes. It's still better to be safe than sorry. Aerial Lace absolutely murders Virizion, and then Earthquake basically hits everything else besides the Bronzong for such good damage, honestly. So yeah, this is able to hopefully try and act as a somewhat check to the zero aura while still being able to potentially honestly sweep late game like if i'm able to get rid of the mammoth swine and get rid of like glygar and bronzong i can just come in with this click earthquake click aerial ace stone edge whatever i need to accordingly and basically do a lot of damage and just win so yeah like sand slash's matchup is honestly not that bad <laughs> the more that i'm looking at it it's actually really good in this game holy crap Okay, but yeah, uh, that is going to be our squad here. Again, we don't want to give too much away for a potential playoff game if we do make the playoffs and we have to face Bepsis again. But if you guys did enjoy this, hit that thumbs up button down below. And with that being said, I will see you all tomorrow with the actual battle itself. So thank you all for watching. Later, everybody. Because my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain, tears or hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping